McCarthy's. Making an accusation without substantial proof. One powerful word. The actions of Senator Joseph R. McCarthy and the reactions by a broad spectrum of the American people can help illustrate that our freedoms guaranteed in the Bill of Rights are vulnerable to fear. In fact, a thoughtful analysis of this period should help serve as a wake-up call to all of us living in an age of terror. Looking at the, at the reactions of those around McCarthy can help us better understand this period of our history. Mr. McCarthy, Mr. McCarthy, I have a question. October 23rd, 1953, and it's my first day in the field. How thankful I am to be working for the Chicago Tribune. I learned so much from all the experience in the press room. Of all the luck, I have special access to Senator Joe McCarthy's briefcase. It's the find of a century. The boys back in the press room aren't going to believe this. I don't have much time before I have to get this back, but it won't hurt to do a little snooping. I wouldn't be a good reporter if I wasn't a little bit curious. This isn't what I thought it was. McCarthy said he had important FBI documents proving that there were communists in the State Department. All this is is a memo from Senator Henry Cabot Lodge about a hearing next Tuesday. Some handwritten notes by McCarthy. Is this a grocery list? Ah, oh, memories. It's been 50 years since McCarthy was condemned in the Senate. I was still in college when he began on his path of a demagogue, as so many have rightfully labeled him. Most historians agree that his reign of political terror began in Wheeling, West Virginia on February 9, 1950. Just two years later, he had amassed a large group of followers, sometimes called McCarthyans. They were certain that McCarthy would save America from communism. McCarthyism was Americanism, with its sleeves rolled, as McCarthy United Nations Ambassador Adlai Stevenson once said after a trip overseas in 1953, in all tongues they speak of him, and in all countries they know of him. So as you can see, we in the U.S. were not the only ones to notice him and react to his accusations. These, these papers seem to be accusations, nothing more. Some of the fellows back in the press room say that Tail Gunner Joe has been accused of lying, ignoring Senate decorum, and insulting other members. Some think that even then he was looking for an issue to save his career when he headed up to Wheeling complaining loudly of communist influence in the, in the government, and specifically the Truman administration. The words that catapulted him to national attention were, let me find out. I hold here in my hand a list of 205 names that were known to the Secretary of State and are nevertheless still working and shaping the policy of the State Department. As you can imagine, this gained McCarthy immediate media attention. The general public was aroused. Fears have now reached the point of paranoia. These emotions have all ricocheted, deepening our suspicions. We have created it for ourselves an unhealthy mix of fear, anger, and mistrust. Fear of being investigated as a communist. Fear of reprisals if investigated as a communist. Fear of being called out as a communist. And fear of each other, even one's neighbor. Cold War tensions have reached a boiling point. China fell to the communists in 1949. Aldrich was convicted to, of perjury in 1950. And Klaus Fuchs was found guilty of passing on atomic secrets to Soviet, Soviet agents. We in the press are all a bit in awe of this powerful senator who seems to be able to end a man's career by uttering a single phrase. Who is this powerful senator who seems to bask in the public eye? Have we in the press helped him reach the status as a demagogue by our faithful trailing of his every word? With the information in this briefcase, I could possibly rein in McCarthy's political power. But who would believe me? A kid reporter still wet behind the ears? I know McCarthy began his career in the Senate in 1946. After four years in the Senate, with little to show in, real, in way of real achievements to his constituents, McCarthy found a chance to step into the spotlight. 
He was moved from the Senate Appropriations Committee in 1950 to the Tidings Committee, in to the Tidings Committee and then to the Senate Subcommittee on Investigations. During the McCarthy era, 1950 to 1954, McCarthy flagrantly investigated, aka persecuted, many people he believed to be communists. Bon. I don't know what to do. I, there has to be a way. There's, I have to. I have to report the news. And McCarthy is the news. It's my job. If I don't, I'll be fired, whether I agree with the statements or not. And if I speak out against him, I'll be labeled as a communist sympathizer. There's got to be a way. That's it. I'll write a letter to the editor. It'll be anonymous. Nobody will know it's me. And I'll just bring up questions that every American should ask about McCarthy. It's foolproof. I can't get in trouble for that. <coughs> McCarthy was famous for his investigations. However, not many people knew about his real tactics. He would hit you where it hurt, and then change the subject. He called this maneuver an Indian Charlie after his friend of the same name. He would often resort to bullying, using vulgar language to get the subject investigated to react and incriminate himself. After McCarthy was done grilling a citizen brought up on charges, that person could be assured that their career was over, whether any accusations had actually been proven. One was guilty by association. I was one of those people. Turns out that letter to the editor wasn't anonymous after all. McCarthy has his zealots whose tentacles seem to reach into every corner of America. I don't know how they knew it was me. I've been labeled as a communist sympathizer, and I've been fired from the Tribune. No one else will give me a job. I'm even being ignored by my friends and family. When I was brought before the Tidings Committee, I had no way to prove my innocence. And therefore, I was guilty without due process, which is firmly guaranteed in the 4th and 15th, in the 5th and 14th Amendments. I didn't know at the time that McCarthy would soon, would soon overstep his bounds and basically destroy himself. However, until then, he would ruin more lives than I cared to count. The junior senator from Wisconsin was almost untouchable until he took on one of the biggest forces in America, the U.S. Army. This began when a McCarthy aide, Private David Shine, was inducted into the, into the military at Fort Dix, New Jersey. McCarthy and his right-hand man, Roy Cohn, tried to bully the Army into special treatment for Shine. The reaction that it launched was that McCarthy was now on the defensive and making a fool of himself on national television. He showed who he really was, a man full of hot air willing to passionately accuse anybody of being disloyal to the American government. A popular political cartoon once portrayed McCarthy hanging himself. Above it it said, the Army McCarthy hearings. This was a stunningly accurate portrayal of the hearings, which led to his condemnation in the Senate in 1954. His reign of terror was over. Yes, I was a victim, but I have had time to reflect and have sought to learn from this experience. A fine line exists between investigation and persecution, which is kept separate when guided by due process. However, when due, pro when due process is hijacked by fear, investigation runs into persecution. Due process requires facts, evidence. When, when our fears prevail, we, investigation, beliefs determine facts, investigation, persecution. Therefore, the crucial lesson to be learned from the McCarthy era is that our fears can empower someone, someone like McCarthy. Yes, our rights are vulnerable, weakened by our own fears. That is the crucial lesson I have pulled from studying this troubled part of our history. Thank you. to do something that not a lot of people knew about and something that really did have an impact on American government and that people really did react to and were kind of ashamed that they reacted to it. And this fit perfectly. I've always been interested in the Cold War time period and it's, it's very interesting to see how when we let fear rule us, 
things happened that we would otherwise not let happen. It became illegal to be a communist. Although it was never written, it was an unspoken rule that if you were a communist, you weren't going to be accepted. Who were some of the people who helped unveil McCarthyism? Um, some of the people who helped unveil McCarthyism were uh, Owen Lattimore, was one of the, one of the huge he was actually attacked by McCarthy as being a terrible communist and how, and that he was a horrible person and these things like that. And that he, had, and he held press conferences with the leader of the communist government and that was not true. And he basically, he tried to find facts and he did. He found the facts that McCarthy had no facts. He, McCarthy originally, when he did his first Wheeling speech in 1950, the list he actually held up of names was a laundry list. And when I say a laundry list, I mean um, I'm going to go dry clean this this week and that next week. It was, that was, he was one of the main people who really took down McCarthy. In your research, did you come across instances of this type of thinking in more recent times? Uh, yes, actually a couple weeks ago, um, Senator, uh, a senator named Mr. I think Andrew Wells, he was he accused 78 to 81 Democrats in the Senate of being communist and said that they needed to leave the Senate because of this. You mentioned at the end that McCarthy was from Wisconsin. Uh, what, what was it about the environment of Wisconsin at this time that you were talking about McCarthy? We'll see. McCarthy came, McCarthy's career, political career, started as a circuit judge. And he became very popular with people from Wisconsin because he was very charismatic. He was very open and people really did like him. And at the time, we were terrified of communism because it was right after World War II. So we voted him into being a senator because he had a military background, which he lied about. Also, he did, McCarthy was very untruthful in his ways of becoming a senator. And he was investigated later for it during the Army McCarthy hearings. What about um, the relationship between McCarthy and prominent politicians at the time when Nixon? Uh, Nixon and McCarthy were actually strong allies at the time. They both were very anti-communist. Nixon was actually part of HUAC, and that was at the time not allowed. HUAC is the House on Un-American Activities, and Nixon was a senator, and senators were not allowed to be in HUAC at the time that Nixon was in HUAC. That's a thing that I came across in my research that really interested me, that they allowed him to do this. But they were very strong political allies. However, people like Eisenhower and Truman, they were very, they clashed very much because they, McCarthy believed them to be communists. For those of us whose eyes are failing a little, can you tell us something about this cartoon? Um, this cartoon here, all of these are written by, here is, it says, I have here in my hand, and it's McCarthy sweating out his investigation, and this is a fake letter and a doctored photo, and they're, they're very bright, burning facts that he's lying. He, and here, this is the first time that the actual word McCarthyism was coined. It, it was the first time it was ever used, and it's the Republican elephant being pulled by some of his greatest supporters toward a barrel of mud to stand for mudslinging, that said McCarthyism, and the elephant was saying, I'm supposed to stand on that. Here it says, is Joe Stalin running in all these elections? And that just shows how paranoid people were of communism at the time. And this is my favorite. It says, American civil rights wiretapping. At the very top it says, wrong number. And that's basically what was going on. We were invading people's personal rights, and we were really taking away a lot of things. In fact, at one time, two people, uh, the Rosenbergs, they were accused of being communist spies and were executed. And they were a married couple. This turned out to be later true, and they had and the government had to pay compensation to this family and to write a letter apologizing for what had happened during this time. McCarthy was not involved in their investigation, but he helped he helped let it get to that point that people were actually dying. It was a modern day Salem witch hunt. Um, what institutions, if any, did you visit? To gather information for your presentation? Um, we, I went to the University of Arizona Library and looked in their primary sources, and that was where I went that really had any information on McCarthy other than libraries. 
I've learned after researching this that McCarthyism is not a very talked about uh, it's not a very talked about thing in history because people were very embarrassed that it happened, especially the government. It was a very it was very hard to find certain things, but I have found some very interesting primary sources at this library, such as a compilation a compilation of all of his speeches. It's very interesting. What was the uh, most difficult aspect of your research? The most difficult aspect of my research was trying to find someone that was pro McCarthy, because I wanted to be able to show both sides of this. And there were not many. Pe there are not many people that are willing to say I am pro McCarthy or I was pro McCarthy. There were not many people that admitted it after the McCarthy era was over. There were. It was hard to find first-hand accounts of people who said that McCarthy was right even after he was condemned in the Senate. It was very difficult, and it was hard to show both sides. And I tried at the beginning with the the senator is very big, very important, and I have his briefcase, and I can see all these things, but I uncovered the truth. Yes, they were they were good friends. And the Kennedys at the time when McCarthy began to do things, Jack Kennedy was not a very strong proponent proponent of McCarthy. They really did not agree with his just his methods. They did not think that they were fair or right. However, their father, Joe Kennedy, was very close with McCarthy and they were very good friends. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.